reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Kento 1, The Creation. Uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, Kento 1, Chapter 1, Text 1. By Sri Bhaktivedan Swami Prabhupada. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Janamadi Asya Yato Anvayad, Itaratas Charters, Avijana Swarat, Tene Brahma Hidaya Adi Kavaye, Muyanti Yad Suraya, Tejo Vari Mridam Yatha Vinamayo, Yatra Tisar Gomar Sadhamna, Svena Sada Nirasta, Kuhakam Satyam Param Dhimahi. O oh my Lord Shri Krishna, son of Vasudev, O oh, all pervading personality of Godhead, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because he is the absolute truth and the primable cause of all causes of the creation, sustenance and destructions of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations and he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji, the original living being. By him even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen in fire or land seen on water, only because of him do the material universe is temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is externally, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Purport, Obeisances unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vasudeva, directly indicate Lord Sri Krishna who is the Divine Son of Vasudeva and Devaki. This fact will be more explicitly explained in the text of this work. Srila Vyasadeva asserts herein that Sri Krishna is the original Personality of Godhead and all others are his direct or indirect plenary potions or potions of the potion. Srila Jiva Goswami has even more explicitly explained the subject matter in his Krishna Sandarbha and Brahma. The original living being has explained the subject of Sri Krishna substantially in his treatise named Brahma Samhita. In an Upanishad in the Sama Veda, it is also stated that Lord Sri Krishna is the divine son of Devaki. Therefore, in this prayer, the first proposition holds that Lord Sri Krishna is the primable Lord and if any transcendental non nomenclature is to be understood as belonging to the absolute personality of Godhead, it must be the name indicated by the word Krishna, which means the all-attractive. In Bhagavad Gita, in many places, the Lord asserts himself to be the original personality of Godhead and this is confirmed by Arjuna and also by great sages like Narada, Vyasa and many others. In the Padma Purana, it is also stated that out of the innumerable names of the Lord, the name of Krishna is the principal one. Vasudeva indicates the plenary portion of the personality of Godhead and all the different forms of the Lord being identical with Vasudeva are indicated in this text. The name Vasudeva particularly indicates the divine son of Vasudeva and Devaki. Shri Krishna is always meditated upon by the Paramhamsas who are the perfected amongst, perfected ones among those in the renounced order of life. Vasudeva or Lord Shri Krishna is the cause of all causes. Everything that exists emanates from the Lord. How this is so is explained in later chapters of this work. The work is described by Mahapuru Sri Chaitanya as the spotless Purana because it contains the transcendental narration of the personality of God as Sri Krishna. The history of the Srimad Bhagavatam is also very glorious. It was compiled by Srila Vyasadho after he had attained maturity in transcendental knowledge. He wrote this under the instructions of Sri Naraji, his spiritual master. Vyasadho compiled all Vedic literatures containing the four divisions of the Vedas, the Vedanta Sutras or the Brahma Sutras, the Puranas, the Mahabharata and so on. But nevertheless, he was not satisfied. 
his dissatisfaction was absorbed by his spiritual master and thus Narada advised him to write on the transcendental activities of Lord Shri Krishna These transcendental activities are described specifically in the 10th canto of this work but in order to reach to the very substance one must proceed gradually by developing knowledge of the categories It is natural that a philosophical mind wants to know about the origin of the creation at night he sees the stars in the sky and he naturally speculates about the inhabitants Such inquiries are natural for man because man has a developed consciousness which is higher than that of the animals. The author of Srimad Bhagavatam gives a direct answer to such inquiries. He says that the Lord Shri Krishna is the origin of all creations. He is not only the creator of the universe but the destroyer as well. The manifested cosmic nature is created at a certain period by the will of the Lord. It is maintained for some time and then it is annihilated. It is annihilated by his will. Therefore the supreme will is behind all cosmic activities. Of course there are atheists of various categories who do not believe in a creator, but that is due to a poor fund of knowledge. The modern scientists for example has created space satellites and by some arrangement or other these satellites are thrown into outer space to fly for some time at the control other time at the control of the scientists who is far away similarly all the universes with innumerable stars and planets are controlled by the intelligence of the personality of godhead is the chief among all these in vedic literatures it is said that the absolute truth personality of godhead is the chief among all living personalities all living beings beginning from the first created being brahma down to the smallest ant are individual living beings and above brahma there are even other living beings with individual capacities and the personality of godhead is also a similar living being and he is an individual as are the other living beings but the lord or the supreme living being has the greatest intelligence and he possesses supermost inconceivable energies of all different varieties if a man's brain can produce a space satellite one can very easily imagine how brains higher than men can produce a similarly wonderful things which are far superior the reasonable person will easily accept this argument but there are stubborn atheists who would never agree shila vyasa do however at once accepts the supreme intelligence as the parameshwara he offers his respectful obeisances unto the supreme intelligence addressed as the para or the parameshwara or the supreme personality of godhead and that parameshwara is shri krishna is admitted in bhagavad gita and other scriptures delivered by shri vyasa do and specifically in this shrimad bhagavatam in bhagavad gita the lord says that there is no other paratattva samam bhavanam than himself therefore shila vyasa do at once worships the paratattva shri krishna whose transcendental activities are described in the 10th canto and his scrupulous persons go immediately to the 10th canto and especially to the 5th chapters which describe the lord's rasa dance this portion of the shrimad bhagavatam is the most confidential part of this great literature unless one is thoroughly accomplished in the transcendental knowledge of the lord one is sure to misunderstand the lord's worshipable transcendental pastimes called rasa dance and his love affairs with the gopis this subject matter is highly spiritual and only the liberated persons who have gradually attained to the stage of paramahamsa can transcendentally relish this rasa dance Shila Vyasa do therefore gives the reader the chance to gradually develop spiritual realization before actually realizing the essence of the past times of the Lord. Therefore he purposely invokes a Gayatri mantra Dhimahi. This Gayatri mantra is meant for spiritually advanced people. When one is successfully chanting in Gayatri mantra, he can enter into the transcendental position of the Lord. One must therefore acquire Brahmanical qualities or be perfectly situated in the quality of goodness in 
order to chant the gayatri mantra successfully and then attain to the stage of transcendentally realizing the lord his name his fame his qualities and so on shrimad bhagavatam is the narration of the swarup of the lord manifested by his internal potency and this potency is distinguished from the external potency which has manifested the cosmic world which is within our experience shila vyasadeva makes a clear distinction between the two in this shloka shila vyasadeva says here in that the manifested internal potency is real where is the external manifested energy in the form of material existence is only temporary and illusory like the mirage in the desert in the desert mirage there is no actual water there is only the appearance of water real water is somewhere else the manifested cosmic creation appears as a reality but the reality of which this is but a shadow is in the spiritual world absolute truth is in the spiritual sky not the material sky in the material sky everything is a relative truth that is to say one truth depends on something else this cosmic creation results from interaction of the three modes of nature and the temporary manifestations are so created as to present an illusion of reality to the bewildered mind of the conditioned soul who appears in so many species of life including the higher demigods like brahma indra chandra and so on In actuality there is no reality in the manifested world there appears to be reality however because of the true reality which exists in the spiritual world where the personality of god had eternally exists with his transcendental paraphernalia the chief engineer of a complicated construction does not personally take part in the construction but he knows every nook and corner because everything is done under his direction He knows everything about the construction both directly and indirectly similarly the personality of godhead who is the supreme engineer of this cosmic creation knows every nook and corner although affairs are being carried out by demigods beginning from brahma down to the insignificant ant no one is independent in the material creation the hand of the lord is seen everywhere all material elements as well as the all spiritual sparks emanate from him only and whatever is created in this material world is but the interaction of two energies the material and the spiritual which emanate from the absolute truth <coughs> the personality of god as shri krishna a chemist can manufacture water in the chemical laboratory by mixing hydrogen and oxygen but in a reality the living entity works in the laboratory under the direction of the supreme lord and the materials which we he works are also supplied by the lord the lord knows everything directly and indirectly and he is cognizant of all minute details and he is fully independent he is compared to a mine of gold and the cosmic creations in so many different forms are compared to objects made from the gold such as gold rings necklaces and so on the gold ring and the gold necklace are qualitatively one with the gold in the mine but quantitatively quantitatively the goal in the mind is different therefore the absolute truth is simultaneously one and different nothing is absolutely equal with the absolute truth but at the same time nothing is independent of the absolute truth conditioned souls beginning from brahma who engineers the entire universe down to the insignificant ant are all creating but none of them is independent of the supreme lord the materialists wrongly thinks that there is no creator other than his own self this is called maya or illusion because of his poor fund of knowledge the materialist cannot see beyond the preview of his imperfect senses and thus he thinks that matter automatically automatically takes its own shape without the aid of a superior intelligence this is refuted in this shloka by shila vyasadeva since the complete whole or the absolute truth is the source of everything nothing can be independent of the body of the absolute truth whatever happens to the body quickly becomes known to the embodiment to the embodied similarly the creation is the body of the absolute